Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Today I wanted to talk a bit about half-life and exponential growth and decay and kind of how those relate to each other. Specifically, I wanted to tell you about how to find decay rate given a half-life or vice versa, how to find half-life given decay rate. So I'm going to show you two examples in this video. The first one we're going to start with is this one right here, how to find decay rate given half-life. And what we're going to do is find the decay rate of a material with a half-life of 460 years. So this builds off of one of the formulas on my Calculus 2 study guide or my integral calculus cheat sheet. If you want to check that out, there's a link down in the description or in the pinned comment below where you can learn more about my cheat sheet that I came out with recently for integral calculus. Um, but this kind of builds on the exponential growth and decay portion of that cheat sheet. Um, specifically what the cheat sheet tells you is basically the kind of general form when you know something has uh, exponential growth or exponential decay kind of what that formula that tells you <clears throat> basically how much of it there is at a given time what that formula looks like so from my integral calculus cheat sheet what we basically know is whenever we have some you know whether it's a population or an amount of some material or some function that represents basically some amount of something in regards to time and if we know that the the amount of that thing is changing at a rate which is constant and proportional to the amount of stuff there we can use this exponential growth and decay formula to kind of model how much of it there is at a certain time so like i said it's pretty commonly used for populations of bacteria or people or whatever the case is or half-life is another really common example that we see with that so basically what i mean to say is we can use this formula to model the amount of material that remains at a given time where basically it's a function of time and the output of that function tells us how much material there is at that time so basically the formula for my study guide is that if we have y of t where y is basically the amount of this material in this case which is decaying and t is time in in years in this case since we know the half-life is 460 years years is probably going to be the best unit to use there and basically what we have is this formula here so we would have y of t equals y naught or y sub zero times e to the kt so basically what the kind of different pieces in this formula tell us, again, y of t is the amount of material left at time t. y sub zero is the amount of material uh, basically at the initial starting point. So in other words, when t is zero, y zero is how much material there is. e is just a constant. That's kind of like pi. e is always going to be the same number no matter what. It's like 2.7 k is the relative growth rate or the relative decay rate so the kind of context of the problem is going to tell you whether we want to consider that to be the relative growth rate growth rate or the relative decay rate and in this case since we know that our material is decaying we know a half-life for the material k is going to be the relative decay rate and then t is time that has passed basically so when t is zero that's when we start measuring and then whatever t we plug in is how many years later we want to figure out how much material there is so basically we can use this this form to model the amount of material left and like i just said k is the relative growth rate or the relative decay rate so basically if we are trying to find the decay rate of this material we can use the half-life along with this formula to solve for k and doing that will tell us what the relative decay rate is or what the decay rate is so how do we do that that's the question well what you want to do is think about what half-life actually means so half-life basically tells you the amount of time it takes for half of the material to decay so in other words let's just say we want to start with a hundred grams of this material whatever the material this is let's just say for example we start with 100 grams of it so basically we'll say y sub zero is 100 okay it doesn't really matter what amount you pick because it decays at a rate proportional to how much there actually is so if you pick a thousand grams or ten thousand grams it's still going to take 460 years for half of that material to decay so it really doesn't matter what number you start with. You can start with 100, you could start with 1, you could start with 1,000, doesn't matter. And what we know is after 460 years, 
half of our material would have decayed. So basically when T is 460, we should get 50 grams of material left at that time. So basically what that means is we can kind of plug these different pieces into this formula and kind of, you know, slowly figure things out from there. So what I mean by that is obviously our Y zero is going to be a hundred. So we'll put a hundred in for Y zero. Our E is always going to be E. K is the relative growth rate that we're trying to solve for. So obviously we're not going to know that yet. But what we know is when T is 460, so if we put in 460 here for T, we know that this function should output 50, right? Because we started with 100. After 460 years, we should be left with half as much as what we started with. So basically by plugging in these kind of three pieces here, now we have this equation which only has one unknown variable, k. So now what we can do now is solve for k. So to do that, we can divide our 100 over to the other side. That gives us 1 half equals e to the 460k. Then we can take the natural log of both sides, giving us natural log of 1 half equals 460k. And then we can divide both sides by 460. And if we do that, that tells us that k equals natural log of 1 half divided by 460. If you're, obviously you would need to you know, plug that into a calculator to get some sort of number that you know, is kind of useful to us. But if we do that, we would get k equals negative 0.0015. So basically, since k is negative, that, that aligns with the fact that it's a decay rate. Right? If k is negative, it's a decay rate. If k is positive, it's a growth rate. That's really the only kind of difference or the way that you would differentiate between uh, a, a exponential growth rate and an exponential decay rate. Is If the k is positive, it's growth. If it's negative, it's decay. So we know that our k is going to be negative 0.0015 which if we wanted to get that as a percentage, so we could say, you know, what percent our decay rate is, we would just move our decimal place over two spots and we would get 0.15% decay rate, right? We can kind of get rid of the negative sign if we're specifying that it's a decay rate rather than a growth rate. So that's it. Now, again, like I said, I also want to show you how to find half-life given a decay rate. So in this case, we did the opposite. But the other example I want to show you is this one right here. How to find half-life given a decay rate. We're going to find the half-life of a material if it has a decay rate of 1% or 0 0.01 per year. So it's the same idea. We're still going to use the same formula, right? Y of t equals y sub 0 times e to the kt. But we have a little bit different information here. Right, what we're looking for in this case is the half-life. And if you remember in our last example, half-life is what we plugged into T. So basically T is gonna be the thing that we're trying to solve for. We were given K, right? We were given that K is 0 0.01, or I should say K is negative 0 0.01 because it's a decay rate. And then again, we can pick some arbitrary around, amount of the material that we're gonna start with. Let's just say 100 grams and after whatever the half-life amount of time has passed, we're gonna have half as much of it. So if we start with 100, we're gonna have 50 after you know, the number of years passed that we're trying to solve for here. And then again, we're still gonna have this E. We know our K is negative 0.01. That was given right here. And then we're gonna have T that we're trying to solve for. So again, we can divide 100 to both sides, giving us one half equals e to the negative 0.01t. Take natural log of both sides. And then divide both sides by negative 0.01. And doing that tells us that t equals 69.315 years. So that's it. That's how to find half-life given decay rate. So please, if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below, hit the subscribe button and that bell icon. I know that the vast majority of the people watching my videos are not subscribed. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, join the Jake's Math Lessons community. Together we'll keep crushing it and getting good grades in Calc. Thanks and see you next time.